Hi, welcome to St. Mary's Parish. My name is Kevin, I'm the seminarian here, and today I'm going to walk you through how to serve when there is incense at Mass. And just to get our terminology down, a couple things should be mentioned. First of all, this is called the thurible. It's what holds the incense, and the person who, the server with the thurible is called the thurifer. So in this case, thurifer, thurible. This contraction, which holds the incense itself before you put it in the thurible, is called the boat, incense boat. So it, it's always important when you serve to get to Mass 15 minutes early. However, when you are the thurible, or when you're the thurifer, it is doubly important. And the reason is because you need to light the charcoals. So that might mean you have to help your mom get your little brother into the van in the morning, but really try to get here 15 minutes early. And when you get here, the first thing you'll do is come to the thurible and start lighting the charcoal. So you need a few things. First, you have this cupcake tin and very important thing, make sure there's no paper in it. Sometimes they come with a thin piece of wax paper so it doesn't stick when you make cupcakes. Make sure you take the paper out and you take this aluminum cupcake holder and put it into the thermal. That way when we clean it, we just have to take that out and we don't have to actually clean the thermal and get all the oils out of it. The next thing you want to do is to take charcoal. And I would recommend to start with, take two cheap pieces of charcoal. And it's usually in a bag like this. If not, if there's none in here, you can go over to this cupboard, which says incense items and candle lighters. Open it and there should be charcoal usually up here or up there. If you can't find any charcoal, then ask either one senior, one Lynn, or myself for DJ and we'll help you find it. So I recommend starting with two pieces of charcoal um, and you place them in, in such a manner that there can be airflow around them. You need three things with fire. You need something to burn, you need oxygen, and you need heat. So you, you want to make sure that there's a little bit of separation so that they can burn. If it's tough kind of fitting them in, it is possible you can break the charcoal in half. That increases your surface area and sometimes that'll help you light them. Then take your lighter and if the lighter is empty, don't throw it away. These are refillable. Um, just put it off to the side and let someone know that there's an empty lighter. So take a lighter and you're going to want to light the various corners of the charcoal. So the way I do it is very simple. You light the top, the bottom, side to side when it's in the thermal. This allows the flame to spread through the whole charcoal. And sometimes you'll have to hold the flame there for a second. And you know when it catches, It'll kind of, you'll hear it, it'll like crackle, and then you'll see a flame spread over the whole piece of charcoal. So once you go top, bottom, side, side, you can think of the side of the cross on the charcoal. That should suffice to have the charcoal lit. As I mentioned earlier, one of the things necessary for fire is airflow. And once you get the charcoals lit a little bit, if you want them to catch, you can gently swing the thurible back and forth, and this will get air to run over and around the coals, and it'll help them catch. But once the charcoals are sufficiently lit, then you can put the thurible back. I recommend hooking it like this at, when it's standing on the stand so that you can get air in there. The next thing you want to do is take the boat and make sure the boat is full of incense. And the extra incense will be in this little bowl here. And you just very easily scoop it into from the bowl into the boat. If, there, if the bowl is empty like it is today, because I forgot to properly set up, once again in our incense cabinet, top shelf will be a bag, usually this particular bag, and you can just pour that into the glass bowl and scoop it then into your boat. Then you put on your out, get ready for mass as normal, and just every now and then check to make sure the charcoals are actually lit. If they don't seem to be burning, then just relight them again until they sufficiently are burning. At the beginning
beginning of Mass, the thurifer processes in with the thurible, and the thurifer always leads the procession. However, right before the procession, the thurifer hands the thurible to the priest, and you impose incense. And impose incense is the fancy theological word for putting incense in the thurible. So the key is, as you can see, he has both hands full. Whenever the priest is going to impose incense, always hand the boat to the priest first. So he'll hand me the boat, and then he will take, he'll, and he'll pull up on his chain and lift it up like that. And the priest will impose incense, usually a couple scoop coals. Sometimes they'll kind of poke the coals around to keep them nice and warm. Then the priest will bless the incense. You can close the third one. back to you. It may be wise when you're in the sacristy before Mass if you're not used to the thermal to sort of practice opening and closing it. So then the thurifer will get in, in line at the front of the procession. Go ahead. All right. At the beginning of Mass, the cantor will begin the introit, and that's when they chant. Don't start walking when the cantor is chanting. They will chant, the organ will begin to play. When the organ plays, everyone will stand up, and then the cantor will start singing with the organ. When that happens, you begin the procession. Go ahead, walk at a good pace, and you can swing the thurible as you process in. At the bottom of the step, the thurifer will stop. Because he's carrying something, he will just bow his head. He will go to his right. Everyone else is processing in, and the thurifer is going to go stand right next to that pillar and wait. And what he's waiting for is the priest. The priest will come up and venerate the altar. And then the priest will come and once in your hand in the boat, he will open the thurible. Impose incense. Bless it. And go back to you. And then you will hand the thurible to the priest. And the priest will take it and incense the altar. And he'll go all the way around the altar, incensing the altar. He'll stop here, bow, and the crucifix. He'll come back here. Go all the way around and then hand the thurible back to you. And that whole time, you just wait here. Once he hands the thurible back to you, you take it back to the sacristy, go around, and you'll put it on the stand. You put the thurible back on the stand, you come back to your seat, and we go through the introductory rites. That's the priest makes the sign of the cross, we sing Kyrie eleison, we sing the glory to God in the highest. Everyone sits down, and there's the first reading. You don't have to do anything, you just sit, listen to the reading, reading, pray. Then the psalm will happen. Again, participate, sing the psalm. When the reader walks back to do the second reading, you will quietly get up from your chair and walk back to the thurible stand, pick up the thurible, and come all the way back and wait right in this hallway, right here with the thurible and the boat. When he sees the lector finish the reading and walk down the first set of stairs and turn towards the altar and bow, he should bring out the thurible to Monsignor who will be sitting. Sometimes the priest will stay sitting, sometimes they'll stand up. Usually they stand up, it doesn't really matter how they do it. They stand up, again, you hand them the boat first. You open the thurible. They impose more incense. They will bless it. Hand the thurible, or hand the boat back to you. And now this is very important. You don't wait for the priest. After he hands the boat back to you, you turn and go to the candlestick on the left side of the altar if you're facing it, and you wait there. Because what's gonna happen is the priest is gonna, gonna either stand up or if he's standing, everyone will start singing the Alleluia. If there's a deacon there, the deacon will come in front of the priest 
and ask for a blessing. If there's no deacon, then the priest will just walk over himself. And the priest or the deacon will walk over. And if it's a deacon, there's going to be a book of the gospel here, like I have it. He's going to pick up the book of the gospel. He's going to show it to the people. And then he's going to turn. When the deacon turns to the right, you turn as well. And you lead the way. And the deacon comes over here. If there is no deacon, there won't be a book of the gospel. However, the priest will come over here. And the priest will bow and then just turn himself. Again, you just wait for either the priest or the deacon to turn towards this direction. And then you turn as well and lead him over. The priest and the deacon will come right here. He will do the beginning of the gospel. Then he will turn. And you will hand him just the thurible. Because he's already imposed incense. He will come here. He will incense the book of the gospel. And then he will turn and hand this back to you. And you stay there during the reading of the gospel and just gently swing the third one. If, by chance, occasionally it happens, the priest or the deacon forgets to grab the third one and incense the book of the gospel, don't worry about it. Don't panic. It happens. Just stand there quietly and swing the third one during the reading of the gospel. Once the gospel is over, everyone will sit down. You will turn around. Go through that door and put the thermal back on the stand. So after the book of the gospel, it's usually time to add charcoal. You started the mass with two pieces of charcoal. That'll get you through the gospel reading. And now you add a third piece of charcoal and that'll usually get you through the rest of the mass. One of the important things is don't empty this out. You don't need to empty this out till the end of mass. It won't get so full that it overflows. You can just add the charcoal on top. And because this is already lit and warm, you don't have to relight the charcoal. What I usually do is I break the charcoal in half, a third piece, and I just place it on top and you can, like that. And if need be, you can kind of push it against the other pieces of charcoal. And then you can listen and you'll hear it catch. If it doesn't immediately catch, then usually just getting some airflow on them will cause them to catch. And then, See, you can hear it, you can see it. So those have caught already. And by the end of the homily, and the next time we need to use the thurible, you'll have fresh coals in there ready to get you through the rest of the mass. After the gospel, there's the homily. You've put the thurible back on the stand. You come back, sit at your seat during the homily. Then we all have the universal prayers of the faithful. We recite the creed as well. And after the universal prayers, Everyone sits down. You and the other servers then go and prepare to set the altar. And it's the same. You stand up with the other servers. You go around back to the other side. And the, the other servers, not you because you have to deal with the third one, the other servers will begin to bring out the chalice and everything else. So the altar has been set. The priest will, or the deacon, will place the water and the wine in the chalice. And after that, before the washing of the hands, you will bring out the boat and the thurible to the priest. You'll come over here and the boat again. Open the thurible. We have these nice fresh coals ready to go. He will impose incense, he'll bless it. He'll hand the boat back to you. And then you will hand the thurible to the priest. Now at this point, instead of staying here, you want to take the boat and put it back on the stand while the priest is incensing the altar. The reason for that is if there is no deacon, you're going to have to incense the priest and the people, and you don't want to be holding a boat in your hand. It's easier. So the priest is going to go around the altar, he's going to incense, he's going to come back here, bow, then he'll turn this way. At this point, if, if there's a deacon, the priest will hand the third bowl to the deacon, and the deacon will incense the priest and the people. If there's no deacon, then the priest will hand the third bowl to you, and you are going to incense the priest and the people. And I want to show a couple tricks of when you're incensing the priest. So the first thing you do whenever you incense something is you bow to it, then you incense it, and then you bow again. But in terms of holding the third bowl, if you're right-handed, then with your off hand, hold this part. And with your right hand, grab the chain. And 
this thurible doesn't get hot, so you can grab the chain pretty low and have more control. Then you take your off hand, put it over your chest, and then you bow to what you're incensing, and then you do what's called a triple double. It's three double swings. So it's one, two, one, two, one, two, and then you bow again. All right? So he will show you how to do this. So the priest has handed the third ball to him. You bow. Make sure you don't hit the priest in the nose or the glasses. <laughs> and then you bow. And when you're incensing one person, you just do all three straight on. So after that, he'll now go out in front, and because he's now incensing a wide group, instead of doing straight on with all of his swings, he'll do two down the center, two to the left, two to the right. So he bows to them. One, two, then to the left. Bows once again. And now you go and put the thurible back. So after mass the thurible will come this way, go to the right. The cross will stand here, the priest will come up and say proxit. You say pro omnibus et singulis. And then at that moment, you'll take the thurible and the bolt back to the sacristy, and you're gonna empty out the thurible and do a brief cleanup. So we'll go back to the sacristy. All right, so after mass, you now have to clean out the third wall. And you're going to put the charcoals in this closet, in this metal bin here. And make sure after you put the charcoals in the bin, you cover it. And that's what it'll Now you have to remember this is hot, so you want to be careful. And there's no one way to do this. You kind of just make it work. If you want a hot pad glove, you can use it. I usually don't use them because I lose dexterity. So one easy thing you can do. And remember, you have the pie tin in here, so all you have to do is get the little pie tin out. Sometimes the easiest way is just dump. Now, this metal thing will occasionally come out, and if it does, you can just reach in there and pull it back out, put it back in here. Once you get all this empty, and be careful, don't burn yourself. Then put the lid back on. You put this stuff all back. We'll leave this. Make sure you close up the bag for the charcoal, especially in the summer, so it doesn't, when it's humid, it doesn't get wet. Close this up, and then you're done for the day. Thanks for serving.